So we are going to talk about combination and binomial coefficient and also about binomial uh, theorem. Okay, so first let's talk about combination. So the first thing is what is the difference between combination and permutation? It's basically commutative versus not commutative. Combination is commutative. Permutation is not commutative. So what the heck is commutative? Commutative means a relation. R is commutative if A, R, B is B, R, A. So what is this R? R is just a symbol. For example, A plus B is the same as B plus A. So the R is this, is this plus symbol. Then addition is commutative. Multiplication is also commutative. A times B is the same as B times A, okay? But matrix A times matrix B is in general not the same as matrix B times matrix A. So matrix multiplication is not commutative. And then in combinatorics, for comparing combination and permutation, basically it's like I have three boxes. Combination means I treat these three boxes in the same way, disregard of order. But permutation, you consider order. So permutation, you consider order. And combination, you don't consider order. So here is an example. So suppose you are in boxing. So this is you, okay, this is you. And then you fight three guy, okay. And then combination means, well, if you fight Mike Tyson, Elon Musk, and Joe Biden, you, you fight in this order, it is the same as you fight Joe Biden first, Elon Musk, and then Mike Tyson, okay. So in this case, you don't care about the order. You, in other words, it's like you are caring about the total boxing power of this three person, okay. But if you're talking about permutation, well, fighting Mike Tyson first is not the same as fighting Joe Biden first, so the order is important. So in this case, they are not the same. So that's the difference, whether or not you consider order or not order. And order in mathematics is called not commutative. An order means it's commutative, like this, okay? And then this is like the uh, word description. So what is the picture description? So here's an important example. So suppose I have three person to form a committee to be formed from a group of five. So you have five people, one, two, three, four, five. So this is five people. How many different committees are possible? So in a committee, you don't care about the order, right? It's not like boxing, right? So you just pick three person. So this picture tells you how many ways you can pick uh, three people from five. So the math notation is five choose three. So it's like this, which is five factorial divided by two factorial divided by three factorial, okay? So I will talk about this later, but let's look at this figure. So what this figure is saying that the red boxes represent which uh, number are selected in one to five. So I select three boxes. So one, two, three, this is one, two, four, this is one, two, five, and so on until three, four, five. So these are the combinations. And this, if I write it as a number, if I write it as a number, it is like this, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five, one, three, four, one, three, five, so on. But what about the other thing? Well, if you look at all this thing, these are the permutation. For example, four, three, five is not the same as four, five, three. So we can think of it as like, I fight a boxing. I fight with person four, and then I fight with person three, and then I fight with person five. It's not the same as I fight with person four, and then I first fight with person five, and fight with person three. Think of three and five, one is Joe Biden, and one is uh, Mike Tyson, then you understand. And here's the important thing. If you look in this row, this is saying that in the combination, I'm selecting three, four, five in my combination. But if you look at all these, these are all the possible permutation within this three, four, five. Okay? So this is all the possible permutation in three, four, five. How many? There are three person, the three, the four, the five. So these are what? There are six possibilities in the permutation. This corresponds to the three factorial. Okay? And actually, this exactly is this three factorial is this three factorial here. This three factorial means that out of the five people, when I select three to form my committee, the number of uh, permutation is actually this part. What is this part? This part is I have double counted three, four, five, three, five, four, four, three, five, four, five, three, and so on. So these all of them are the same. If I write as a box, draw as a red black uh, cross. If I consider this color figure then I don't care about all of them, so I have double counted them, so therefore I have to divide this three factorial. And if I don't divide this three factorial, which is this part, that means the five factorial divided by two factorial. What is it? It is five times four times three, right? Then what is this thing? This means first guy, I have five ways to choose. Second guy, I have four ways to choose. Three guy, I have three ways to choose. This is permutation. So in other words, combination, okay, combination is like permutation divided by the number of people you select in the permutation, okay? So this is the, the number, okay? Combinate, if you look at here, combination is a smaller set than the permutation. So it makes sense. You divide a number by something else. This makes the number smaller and therefore it gives you combination. So this is an explanation. How do you distinguish combination and permutation? Let me repeat. In wording, it's order versus not order. In picture, this is one example. 
Then what's the math to compute combination? You probably have learned it in high school that it's called binomial coefficient. So some people you write this NCK or some people write like this, okay? I don't use this notation, I will write bracket. So NK, okay? This is defined as N factorial divided by N minus K factorial and K factorial. And because I can swap these two, I can swap, so I can also write as N factorial, K factorial, N minus K factorial, and therefore this is the same as N, N minus K. Okay, so in other words, 5, 3 is the same as 5, 2, 10, 2 is the same as 10, 8. This is a property of binomial coefficients. Here, I have an example. What is 5 choose 3? 5 choose 3 is this example. 5 people, 1 to 5, I choose 3 to form a community. How many possible combinations? That means how many patterns here? Well, I just compute 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial and then 3 factorial, it will be 10. So that means there are 10 rows here. Okay, you can count, there are 10 rows here. And then what's 4, 2? That means 4 choose 2, there will be 6. Then what is exactly this meaning? As I told you, this NK means N choose K combination. Okay, there are a lot of property of binomial coefficients. For example, this two figure tells a lot of things. This triangle has a name called Pascal triangle. And then here are the math property of the Pascal triangle. So don't worry, this slide and this slide are the same thing. Okay. This is saying that the outermost column in the Pascal triangle are all one. So if you look at this figure, these are all ones. These are all ones. But what are these numbers? They are these kind of numbers, okay? So this is the first rule, okay? And if you want to prove it, you can prove it. So what is nn? n factorial divided by n minus n factorial n factorial. These two cancel out is one. n minus n is zero factorial, which is one. So you have one divided by one. That's one. And then nk is the same as n minus k. I have already told you this 5, 3 is the same as 5, 2, 10, 2 is the same as 10, 8. Okay, what's next? This thing, the sum of all the coefficient for the fixed n from k from 0 to n is 2n. So this means sum of elements in the n row. So for example, in this third row, you have 1, 2, 1. 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4. 4 is the 2 to the power 2. Okay, so if I label this as row 0, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, then they correspond. Okay, and let's say I talk about take this, this, okay? This is 1, 3, 3, 1. If I take the sum, it gives me 8. 8 is the 2 to the power of 3. So this is row 3, okay? This thing, what does it mean? So in this figure, what is this? So it's like, I have this 4, this is the same n, and then this is the k0, k1, k2, okay? And then what? k plus 1, that means k3 is this number. So this number, add this number, give me the same k plus 1, but one row below, which is this number. So in other words, this triangle, the top two numbers add together give you the bottom one, okay? Or this triangle, the top two numbers add together give you the bottom one. Or this triangle, 70 plus 56, give you 126. If I convert to binomial coefficient, that means this add this give you the thing below. Notice that this is 4, 2 plus 4, 3, okay? Give you 5, 3. So this one is k plus 1, this one is k. This one is k plus 1. This one is n. This one is n. This one is n plus 1, which is this one. Okay. And then what's next? This thing looks very interesting. So it's saying that for all the k from 0 to half of the n divided by 2 floor, it gives you fn plus 1. So what does it mean? It means sum of half of Pascal triangle is the next Fibonacci number. So what does it mean? Basically, it's this 1 is 1. If I have this slash line, so I'll make it bigger, okay? Then 1 plus 1 gives me 2. And then this 2 plus 1 gives me 3. And then this 1, 3, 1 gives me 5. And here's the thing. This red number are all Fibonacci numbers. So this 2 gives me this 2. These two number give me 3. These two number give me 5. And so on. Right? You see, 3 plus 5 gives you 8. 5 plus 8 gives you 13. And it magically appears as the sum of what? Half of the Pascal triangle. Okay? So this is like the special property of Fibonacci number and Pascal triangle. So these are all the property you can see by looking at this figure. That's why I said this figure tells many things, okay? And there are a bunch of property here, okay? Don't worry, these are not going to be in exam. But now I'm going to discuss how do you prove this kind of thing. So I want to prove this. How do you prove this? The algebraic proof means you do very tedious job. So first, what's nk? By definition, it is this term, okay? So you write down the definition, and then you also write down the definition for this term. Now for these two terms here, I need to make sure they have the same denominator. So what I do, this guy is with k, but this guy with k plus 1. So what I do, I, I make a k plus 1 in this part. 
and then for this guy is n minus k minus one. This is n minus k. So I put a n minus k in this part. So after I do this, then denominator will go into here. So I get the k plus one factorial. And for this n minus k, I go into here. Then I have the n minus k factorial. And now you see both of them have the same denominator. I can combine them. So the thing on top, I just multiply them. Now I have the thing on top add together. Both of them have n factorial. So it will be k plus one plus n minus k. Okay. The k and the k cancel out, so it will be n plus 1. n plus 1 with the n factorial give me n plus 1 factorial. So I have the top thing. And then for the bottom thing, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to plus 1 and then minus 1, okay? And create the 1 from nothing. Then I get this, okay? Don't forget this plus 1 and this minus plus 1 will cancel out, so I get this. And then what is this thing? This thing is just the binomial coefficient of n plus 1, k plus 1, which is this thing. So we have proved that from here, we will grow to here. And since these are all equal sign, that means we have also proved that this one will go to this one. Okay, so this is the algebraic proof, which is uh, very easy to understand, but very tedious. Then what about the combinatorial proof? So combinatorial proof, the idea is like this. First of all, it's not in exam, I repeat, but here's the idea. So you find an object to count. So let's say you have an object. So I write a box here. So you count it through method one. Okay, you count it through method one. Okay, then it gives you a formula one. Okay, give you a formula one. I call it fx. Now you count it using method two. Okay method 2. It gives you a formula 2, I call it gx. Since I am counting the same things, then fx should be gx. That's the idea of combinatorial proof. Okay? Not difficult to understand. So let's see how do we prove this using combinatorial proof. So first, we are saying that we have a set S with a, b, c, t up to z. Okay, this is not saying I have 26 letters. I'm just saying this is n plus 1. So this is not necessarily 26 letters. So I have n plus 1 people. So I have a thing and then here are n plus 1. Okay? And now, first content. What is this? This is n plus 1 people picking n plus 1. In this n plus 1, I'm selecting k plus 1. Then how many ways can I pick this combination? It will be n plus 1 and then k plus 1, right? So this is the counting one. Now, this one have nothing uh, special. Let's talk about the second counting. So suppose I have a VIP. So is this VIP? VIP is an E. So I have an E here, okay? So that means A, B, C, D, and then skip E, and then go to F. Okay, this E is special, okay? Now, we are doing the same thing. Selecting k plus 1 people in F. So I'm doing the same thing. Among all the n plus 1 people, I'm going to pick k plus 1 to form a combination. But now I'm looking at this e. There are two possibilities. The first possibility is this e is selected in the first uh, se selection. And the second is possibility is this guy is not selected. So suppose this e is selected. So I'm under this bullet point. This e is selected. Then what does it mean? Because if e is selected, so from n plus 1, we are now reducing to n people for the next selection. Right? And also for the k plus 1 people, we have already selected uh, e. But the thing is, Okay, but the thing is, I've already selected this E, so the next remaining people will be K people, because I've already selected this E, so that means this one here is done. So that's why this NK means how many people we have remained, not yet selected. So this is the first K, this E is selected. What about the second case? The second case, when we select the first guy, this E is not selected. If this E is not selected, that means what? We know that we need to select K plus 1 people, but this time this E is not being selected, okay? So we still need to select K plus 1 people, right? So therefore, we still have this K plus 1. But for all these n plus 1 people, we know that one of them will never be selected because e will not be selected. So we only have n of them. So we will have this number of combination. And since this VIP selected and VIP not selected are both possible way and they are disjoint, disjoint, so that means by some rule, I can add them. It gives me the number of way to select n plus 1, k plus 1 people from n plus 1. So therefore, this selection method, second counting, gives me this sum. And since the first counting and the second counting are counting the same thing, so therefore, they have to be equal. And this is how you prove this equal sign. And therefore, you have this formula, which is the same as this one. So let me repeat. What's the combinatorial proof? You have an object. You want to count. You count it using two different approach. And you have two formula, okay? Fx and gx. Since they are counting the same thing, then they have to be equal. This is how you establish the equality. And again, this is not in exam. This is just for you to learn something new, okay? What is the meaning and application of binomial coefficient? Basically, it means nk is a way to select k element from an n set if repetition is not allowed. So again, for example, I have a set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many subsets are total? Well, the number of subsets is for one, for the first guy, do I select the first guy? I select and or I don't select. So I select, then I have a one. If I don't select, I have empty set. And then for after I select one, do I select two? If I select, I have one, two. If I don't select, I have just one, okay? For empty set, if I select two, I have two. If I don't select, I keep empty set. Now from this, I have another choice for the free. Do I select free? If I select free, I have one, two, three in my set. If I don't select free, I have one, two. 
For this one, if I select three, I have one free. If I don't select three, I have one. For this two, if I select three, I have two free. If I don't select three, I have two. For empty set, if I select three, I have three. If I don't select three, I have empty set. And so on, you see, I can draw a tree. And how many branches in each branch? Each time when I branch, I branch two branches. And how many layer can I branch? There are six of them. So that's why you have two to the power six, okay? And you have 64 number of uh, subsets. Now, how many four subsets are there? Okay, four subset means I select from this N set, which is a six set here. I pick four of them and they are no repeated, okay? Then it will be six choose four, which is this. It give me this number, okay? And none of them are repeated, okay? And here's another long example. How many length time string over alpha vec zero one contains six or more one? So that means what? I have a length time string, so that means I have ten boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten boxes. And each of these boxes can contain zero and one. And I want to have contains six or more one. So that means I can have six boxes containing ones or seven boxes containing one or eight boxes containing one and so on until all of them containing one. So this is the same as from 10 boxes, choose six boxes and put a one inside. And this is the same as from the 10 boxes, choose seven boxes and put a one there. And this is the same as from 10 boxes, choose eight boxes and put a one there. And then I sum all of them, which is this thing, okay? So this is the answer, okay? In this example, I make use of the binomial coefficient and also the sum rule of this. Why? Because this is basically union. So this is inclusion exclusion principle, but this set are disjoint, so I can just do this, okay? Because they are independent, okay? So I have this. And then you may wonder, how do I compute this? How do I compute this? This is what? This thing, okay? is summation, what? 10K from 6 to 10. From 6 to 10, right? I can do this. I can do this. Summation, 10 from 0 to 10 minus from 0 to 5. Okay? So what does it mean? This means I have 6, 7, 8, up to 10. This means I have 6, 7, up to 10, but then what? I add 1 to 5. Because I add 1 to 5, I have to subtract 1 to 5, okay? Here, okay? And what is this? Adding the binomial coefficient from 0 to 10. You already know how to compute this. This thing, okay? So, summation from 6 to 10 is the same as summation from 0 to 10 minus summation from... 1 to uh, 0 to 5. What is this? Binomial coefficient of this thing. Okay, this is summation 10, 0, 10, k, which is according to this 2 to the power n. n here is 10, so 2 to the power 10. What is this? This is summation 5, 5, k, 0. By the formula here, n is 5, so it will be 2 to the 5. So it will be 2 to the power 10 minus 2 to the power 5, which if you do the calculator, it will give you this number. Okay? But if you can write down 2 to the 10 minus 2 to the 5, that is good enough, okay? So this is an illustration, okay? So these are the binomial coefficient for counting without repetition. But if we allow repetition, things changes, which will be the topic of next video.